today's Star Watch. For Valpo, Jenna Stangler. A good face-up basket back to the basket player. Homecoming for her. For K-State, Nicole Odie redefines the post position. She moves, she passes, and all-time leading scorer in the Big 12. Beth Mullins along with Dan Hughes, K-State co-champions of the Big 12. Their first league title in the Big 12 conference ever. And Vapor, Valparaiso for the second year in a row, conference champions in the mid-con. Goldie wins the tip to Lori Kane. Valparaiso will start in a man-to-man -man defense. That is the basis of how they play basketball. It all starts with the defensive end for the Crusaders. Goldie, the kick out to Kane. No good. Lecker with the rebound won't go. All three prominent members for the Cats get a touch right there as we take a look at Keith Freeman in his 10th season. Up against some history, a 15 seed has never beaten a two seed in NCAA tournament history. A fresh 30 here for the Cats and Oldie with the drive using the left. Oldie is such a defining player in the post. She faces, she passes, she does a lot of things point guards do with the center position. What's Valpo going to try and do offensively today, Dan? In the half court, they'll be very patient. They're going to see a lot of execution. They're going to see a lot of sets and the three. Hamill off the mark. And it will go to K-State. Freeman, who started coaching when he was 19 years old. He was still in college at Huntington College. When the previous coach left, the AD said, it's all yours if you want it. He took it as Lori Kane drops the three, shooting 43% this year. She's got 96 now on the season. If you like three-point shooters, train your eyes on number 10. Probably one of the finest that you'll see in the entire tournament on a day-to-day -day basis. The great story for K-State is Kane, Oldie, and Wecker, all homegrown talent out of the state of Kansas. And what a recruiting coup for Deb Patterson in her eighth season, 150 career wins. The number two seed, the highest ever for K-State. You'll see a lot of sets out of K-State. They really do a great job of spreading the floor, can really, really move without the basketball. Train your eyes away from the basketball. You'll see a lot of good things happen. Megan Mahoney on the dribble drive. Megan now just eight points away from becoming the fourth player on the floor for Kansas State with 1,000 points in her career. You know, you make a good point. Megan Mahoney, is, is, when you talk to rival coaches, that name comes up so prominently on how important. It's also right inside. Braun. Boy, the freshman will have to come up big. How about that? You're a freshman starting in your first tournament game and you're facing Oldie. There she is trying to defend the Cole. And Braun commits the foul. Here are the big three for Kansas State and their numbers close to 50 points per game. Oh, yeah, outstanding. But you know what? In some cases, it might be a fabulous four because Mahoney really adds and complements what you're seeing right there. Wecker may be the most underrated player in the nation. Nicole is a 68% free throw shooter. Good scorer, good rebounder, excellent passer out of the post. Gets both. Valpo's really got to do a job in the half court. They've got to get some points in the paint. Now, they can shoot to three, but they got to play through some penetration. And it may be through an inside-outside game that they get the look that they need. Boone swings it over to Vitovsky. Knuston, shot clock's under 10. The runner won't go. Wrecker, weak side rebound. Kendra in transition, showing the good handle. The feed to Oldie. <laughs> Terrific transition for K-State. Nicole Oldie can really run the floor, as, as the Crusaders just found out. She can really make your post have to transition big time. Valpo making their second consecutive trip to the tournament. Ousted in the first round last year by Purdue. As Catherine Knuster, the senior from Grand Rapids, knocks down a three. Yeah, great job of using that penetration in the post. Spreading the floor. Valpo will use the three. That's a big part of what they're going to do in the half court. Wecker fights 
it up and knocks it down. You know how hard that is to square up in that situation, get the balance, read the pressure. You know, a lot of players read defense off the ball. Kendra Wecker reads it really well on the ball. She is a Kodak All-American nominee. Very good possibility that both Wecker and Oldie as teammates will be Kodak All-Americans. It's happened the last two years. Last year at Duke, two years ago at Connecticut. Clock again, under 10, Boone's runner won't go. Rebounded by Mahoney. The guards rebound very well for Kansas State. Well, they sure do, and, and, and they need to. That, that's the only area that, that you don't see dominance in, in the Wildcats is in the rebounding area. Wecker off the spin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> little, little turnaround face up. Now, if you want to guard her real hard out, she'll just go to your back of the basket and make a play down there. Really a fun play to, to watch. Kendra Wecker has just become the number two career scorer in Kansas State history behind Nicole Oldie. And she passes Diana Miller with that bucket. Not bad for Coach Patterson. You got the school's two best scorers on the same club. Stangler goes to the left and scores. They are finding some success inside. Good execution, but look at the transition defense and the pressure the Wildcats put on it. Foul will go against Valpo. I'll tell you, they, they redefine your transition defense because even after scores, Valpo has got to really get back, match up, and their posts have got to run. You know, a lot of times your guards are used to it, but your posts have really got to run against Oldie because Oldie goes end to end as well as anybody that you're going to see. The game plan for Deb Patterson was to establish this game inside out, and they have done that thus far with Oldie and Wecker combining for 11 points here early on. You see Betsy Rotima coming in the game. They might not even be here without this important sub for the Crusaders. Ten-point lead right out of the gate for K-State here in the Mideast. Oldie, Kane, and Wecker have all scored early on as the Wildcats have jumped out to the early lead. Valpo shooting 50%. To stay close. Well, you, you, good point. You know, that, that's a well-played offensive game, but Valpo has got to get into the shot. They've got to create a game where they can control tempo by their defense. <laughs> Beth, it's an interesting study to watch K-State defensively. They put great pressure on the ball. Led the Big 12 in defensive field goal percentage because they get out and get to it. And when they rebound in combination with that, it triggers that offensive. And, and I'll just tell you, without the basketball, as far as running the floor and moving without it, they're a pleasure to watch. Substitution as Stangler comes back in for Valpo. And swing it around on the perimeter. You know, K-State in the man-to-man. -man. This is a multiple defensive team. They'll play a lot of different defenses, and if needed, they'll go full court in this game. Right now, not needed. Oldie is out right now. Bree Madden has come in for K-State. You know, it's interesting. They would like to play this game in half court, but if they can't, they'll try to put full court pressure on the Crusaders. Big block by Mahoney, but then Boone able to track back to break it up. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues tonight at 7 Eastern. A one seed in action, the University of Texas. And also a good matchup there, the 10 seed Ole Miss taking on a 7 seed Villanova. Carol Ross back in the tournament at Ole Miss as the head coach. And uh, Harry Fredis Club trying to match that elite eight run from a year ago. Traveling violation called on K-State to turn it over. Yeah, good job in the post. You know, Valpo did a good job of staying in that play. A lot of times with the pivot with a post player, you know, you, 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 your influence, your foul, did a great job. This is a very sound Valparaiso team defensively. A lot of fun to watch. They've got to continue to execute, execute offensively. They held teams in the mid-con to just 55 points per game. In fact, they've only given up 70 once since Christmas. And they held DePaul to 70. That's the highest scoring team in the country. You've got to be impressed with the Wildcats and the way they're defending. Right now. They're in every shot. They're triggering their offensive transition. They're coming down to half court. Both teams going to their benches. I think that's very, very wise. You know, you want to get that tournament experience early. Another turnover forced by the Valpo defense. and 
three giveaways for K-State as Oldie returns. She's got to take care of the basketball. But Wecker's rebounding and now putting pressure on you. If they pass and catch that pass, that's a real key to good transition. When your rebounder can advance the dribble, as we've seen, it puts tremendous pressure on your transition defense. Valpo's very methodical. They will take their time offensively. Yeah, Katie Boone is a real tough nut at the point. She can really battle. She'll know what's need done. She won't panic. This is their leader. Turnover gives it back to K-State. Valpo has to take good care of the basketball, according to their coach, Keith Freeman. They only turn it over about 14 times a game, plus four in the turnover margin. Yeah, they're very, very efficient in that situation. Now let's watch K-State in half court. I, I, I just really enjoy watching their movement away from the basketball and how that contributes to what we're seeing right here, inside-outside play and ball reversal. Kane from way outside. There's a sampling of the kind of range that Lori Kane has. I mean, we could almost reach out and touch her. I mean, that's deep. That's deep right there, but that's the range she had. See the ball movement, and they know she's a shooter. They look to find her. Number four in the nation this year with 95 threes in the regular season. She's got two here in the first half. Stangler will try and match it. Good work on the offensive boards, and Braun is fouled. Twenty to seven lead for Kansas State over Valpo. The two seed with the lead, 12-33 to go. Mid East region first round action. Winner of this one will match up with the winner of the next game here, Minnesota and UCLA. The Duke Blue Devils are the top seed overall in the Mid East. Look at Kamara Braun, you know, a Minnesota product playing in the NCAA tournament here in Minnesota. How much more exciting does that get? She's been a real key to this tournament run and, and their opportunity in the NCAA tournament. They initially wanted to redshirt the freshman from Savage, Minnesota. Braun and Jenna Stangler, both from nearby. Homecoming for them here to come back to Minneapolis. Oldie back in the game and will head back to the free throw line. You know, Beth, I like seeing Oldie do that. You know, I, I've seen a lot of tape. I've watched her a lot. She's great without the basketball. I like to see her go right down in the block and complement that with her movement. That's really hard to guard when you do both. Good recognition, too, by K-State. They know they've got the advantage with Oldie. That is now the second personal foul on the freshman, Tamara Braun. Oldie remains perfect from the line. Look inside here. That's a back-to-the-basket move. You know, she, as she increases her ability to get position on the catch, like that, low block position, that only makes it harder to guard. And she's already very, very difficult to guard. Oldie has not missed from the line or the floor here in the first half. Ten points. Going over to Susie Hamill, now Gatoski. Look at the patience. Open in the post. Don't do a lot of cutting. This is what they've got to do. Regardless of the score, they've got to create that type of play. Boone with the drive and then the draw of the defense and the dish to Gatoski. You know, Coach Freeman's got to love that patience. Ball reversal, spreading the floor, using the dribble drive to penetrate to the lane. Kane. Wills will test the half-court execution. They're going to stay in place really well. You can see the Wildcats did a great job of going inside. Madden felt the defense to her left, spun to her right. What picturesque high-low. Oldie is an outstanding passer. It's amazing. We're talking about the Big 12 all-time leading scorer, and we're talking about what a great passer she is. But that's the talents that she brings to the game. It's been a, a good first round so far for bigs around the country. Gatoski looking for another three. Offensive stick back and a foul. Stangler doing a good job on the glass. Great job of getting on the boards, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to really challenge. Take a look at that coming off. You see the persistence, and that's a rebound outside the body area. That's what you've got to have. You know, they're, they're not going to have signs, but they can go get balls. You know, good rebounders will get outside their body. There's a great example. Other big girls doing well yesterday included Sandora Irvin at TCU, Vanessa Hayden for Florida, Ashley Robinson for Tennessee, Jenny Benningfield at Vanderbilt, all had double-doubles in leading their teams to first-round wins yesterday. 
Stangler's got to score. Stangler gets both. Boone will draw the defense and then dish to the three-point sharpshooter, Gatoski, to knock it down. here at Williams Arena in Minneapolis with Minnesota taking on UCLA in our second game here in the Mideast. First round action, Beth Moans along with Dan Hughes. And after a shaky start, Valpo has settled down nicely. Yeah, they have. And that, that's what, you know, you get hit by the talent level of the Wildcats. Now Valpo's got to go to their game plan. They've got to stay strong and persist. Nicole Oldie leading the way for K-State with 10 points in the first half. Good balance, as has been the case all year for Valpo. You know, they've only got one player averaging in double figures. They didn't have anyone averaging in double figures in league play. Everybody had to make contributions for Keith Freeman's club. Scoring by committee. But that's exactly what they've done, and timely scoring. You know, this is a team that's very good. You know, they're 10-3 they're and three in games to Scott, uh, less than, than 10 points. So they're used to close contact. Mahoney tried to drop it off for Madden. Doing a great job of recovery, help and recovery. And by that, I mean the ability to get to the ball and then get back to your player for Valpo. Valpo's a very sound defensive player. This is Hamill. Battle. The death in the family. Pneumonia. Bad injury in each of her first three seasons has Susie Hamill, number 22 in black. And uh, everybody's so excited, not only to be here for Valpo fans, but to see Hamill get the opportunity to finally play in an NCAA tournament game after all she's been through over the course of her career. Oh, it, it, it's absolutely fitting. You know, her dad was Jim was a great coach in Indiana, and, I, and I'm sure in, in her own way, this is a little bit of a, of a moment for her to be playing in the NCAA tournament as a senior with her squad. Senior from Lafayette, Indiana. And her teammate, Lauren Bechtold, will head to the free throw line. Megan Mahoney has picked up her second personal foul for K-State. You know, the Crusaders are using the foul line. They're getting on the glass a little bit. They're kind of hanging in. Their depth is showing a little bit. And that's what you've got to do because the Wildcats are going to put extreme pressure. Watch how they spread the floor. See how they're spread out right there? They'll fill the high-low. They'll play through only as a high post player as well as low. You know, K-State would rather be somewhere else with Minnesota possibly lurking. Always the fear of looking ahead and having to play a lower seat on your home floor, not something they're excited about doing. You know, Jeff Patterson's got to be a little concerned with the Crusaders' ability to get on the glass. That's a fifth offensive rebound now. They're really doing a good job of getting second attempt. That's going to tempo the game a little bit in, in Valpo's favor. The clock again, under 10, now under 5. Lost out of bounds off of Meredith Walker. One of the big storylines in this year's tournament, lower seeds getting the host. Yesterday, they were two and three. UCSB and Chattanooga winning. Temple, New Mexico, and Montana could not hold court at home. You know, obviously, you, you, you want to be at home, no question. But there's a certain pressure that comes with that as well. And that pressure is a little odd sometimes in teams. Next year, the tournament will go to eight sites instead of 16. I bet that you see Coach Freeman, and, and we can see it from our angle. Say, slow down here. Let's let's tempo the game a little bit. Let's make them guard. Let's take some of their energy away at the defensive end so that maybe they're not coming back at us quite as hard. You know, and, I, and I think Valparais is very comfortable in this style of game that you're seeing right now. will go against Valpo. The other thing to, to note about the Crusaders is the fact that Keith Freeman was telling us, hey, we're not going to be in awe of K-State. Their schedule this year has included Notre Dame, Villanova, Oregon, Purdue, and DePaul. So they have played some of the best. Another takeaway by the Crusader defense. Well, Valparaiso does a great job of swarming. Now they're attacking. They'll play in transition off their defense, as we just saw. The two-state, uh, two-seed Kansas State taking on the 15-seed Valparaiso here in the Mideast region. First round action in Minneapolis. Beth Mullins along with Dan Hughes. A 15 has never beaten a two in NCAA tournament history. 
Nicole Oldie leading the way for K-State with 10 points. And the story for Valpo, they are getting on the offensive glass. They are being very methodical, and they have been able to hang around here in this first half. And they're keeping the game in the half court. You see a little transition right here. But they've been able to play their swarming defense, five on five, body on body, and that's what they want. Rucker no good. Oldie tried to tip it out to a teammate, and Nicole was called for the foul. That's her first. Yeah, you see her very active on the offensive glass, which is what you want. But in the Wildcats, look at the swarming defense here. Now, that, they got a little look there, but they're in position for blockouts. Great blockout situations right there. Got the over the back. You know, Valpo's doing a good job of, of creating a tempo defensively, you know, and staying in play. They do not mind the score right now, the pace of this game. No. Favoring the upstarts from Valparaiso near Lake Michigan in northwestern Indiana, about an hour away from Chicago. Of course, famous for to who fans for Bryce Drew and Homer Drew. I'm sure they're, they're, they're watching this game right now. Tough collision. Yeah. Big time collision. The Valpo player is still down. Susie Hamill. Let's uh, check in right now with Maurice Davis. Susie Hamill, just a moment ago, we were talking about her toughness in a big time collision. Look at the skip right here. The hit, the hit on the floor was jarring in that situation. Took a while. Good to see Susie up. Looks like she's having a conversation right there. She was able to walk off on her own accord. The senior from Lafayette, Indiana, charged with the foul as well on the play. Her first, K-State to inbound. The two seeds struggling offensively here in the last four minutes. And a lot of the credit goes to the Valpo defense. Held ball, and the Crusaders will get it. Absolutely great job of bringing help from the weak side to Nicole Oldie's post catch and making her become a passer with her back to the back. I just saw the scoring drought. Now Valpo, Canister, Kaboon. Look at the cutting off the ball. It's very important. They, they're they're going to open the post up. When the clock runs down, they'll attack with the dribble. Boom. Count it. Katie Bill with her first bucket. I think Valpo's doing a great job of tempo in this game right now. Their defense picked up. Their offense is executing. We got a five-point game with seven to go in the half. 7 0 run. Seven different players have scored for Valpo. Another steal. Canuster. And she's bumped. Well, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues at 2.30 Eastern on ESPN. It's Duke and Elena Beard, the ESPN.com National Player of the Year. Here in Minneapolis, we've got UCLA and Minnesota. And other action, the one seed in the East, Penn State with Kelly Mazzanti, the top scorer in the country this year. With Curry in the tournament. The Stangler with another offensive rebound. And we talked about Stangles and Fulton inside. She's got to give them that physical toughness inside. That's a great example of it. Battled the block, the check out, went and got the offensive rebound. Nicole Oldie is fouled, and she will head back to the line where she is 6 of 6 here in the first half. And that's a pretty good cr crutch to lean on when you got Nicole Oldie posting up inside and that aggressive. She really wanted that ball. That's a low block catch, a drop step, and a power move. That was a big time play. Second foul on Stangler. Oldie now 7 of 7 at the line. Got the bigs in foul trouble. Braun checks back in. She's got two. That ends a 9-0 run for Velpo with that free throw. Yeah, look at that assist total. Almost four a game. Those are guard-like numbers. We're talking about over 110 on the season for Oldie. Well, she developed her game as a face-up player. You know, now she's developing her back-to-basket play. That's just opposite of what, what traditional post play is. But she's redefining it. She's an exciting post player as she develops. A member of this outstanding senior class around the NCAA. The record called for the foul on the drive. You know, Wecker did a great job of competing, but she's got to face up. 
16 to go in the first half. Mid-East region, first round action, the 15 seed Valpo and the two seed K-State Beth Mullins along with Dan Hughes, the Crusaders. Shaky start, but they have settled down nicely. They have scored 10 of the last 12 points to pull within four after trailing by double digits early on. They've done a great job of, you know, Nicole already got a great start, but they've kind of limited her touches. The whole game, they've done a good job on the team. Rucker, on Mahoney, they've been in plays with them. You know, their defense has created a tempo for the Crusaders that they just love playing. Over five minutes now since the last Kansas State basket. You can see the little confident, little ball pressure. Look at, look at the double team immediately on the pole. Kane looking for three. Got it. That's her third of the first half. So when Kane gets it going, that, that's playing through Nicole Odie inside, and Kane is the best at that. Her catch and shoot ability, second to me. Especially when you put Kane on the same side of the floor with Odie. And Kutowski responds with her second triple of the half. Kind of trade and punches, so to speak, back and forth. Two threes. Well played game so far. You know, you see Coach Freeman right there imploring his team to keep it up. He just loves the tempo, the enthusiasm, and at both ends. It's not just been defensively. Their execution offensively has gotten them on the glass and gotten them good looks. Yesterday in the first round, two upsets. Chattanooga over Rutgers giving the Southern Conference its first NCAA tournament win ever in the Midwest. And then in the East, the 11th seed, Santa Barbara over Colorado, the seventh year in a row that an 11 seed has knocked out a six seed. And Lori Kane whistled for her first. You know, going to the line right here, it's interesting. In, in the Wildcats' mind and Deb Patterson's mind, you know, she may be thinking about something we talked about earlier, Beth, and that was full court pressure. You know, the reason for that, to speed the game up, to control the tempo with with their defense. I'm sure that's running through her mind, and, but, but they got a score to do that. And right now, Valpo's making a very difficult time to do that. Kutowski knocks them both down. It is a one-point game. Mahoney to Oldie, goes to the left off the dribble, and she's fouled. You know, Oldie did a great job of facing that up, reading the situation, going with her left hand. Now, that's a 6'5 post player putting it down her left hand and getting in the paint. Take a look right here. Two feet in the paint. Now, that's what you strive for out of your perimeter player. Now, that's a 6'5 post player, <laughs> and she does it better than most perimeter players that I watch play. That's why she's so special in her position. Oldie, her first miss at the line and her first miss in the game. She's two of two from the floor as well. Finalist for the Wade Trophy. She will undoubtedly be a Kodak All-America for the second year in a row and a very high pick in the WNBA draft. A timeout here in Minneapolis with 5.05 to go in the first. You know, we've got a really good basketball game going here. You know, the Wildcats came out and really delivered a blow early, but Valpo dealt with that, made a couple little adjustments, got the tempo to their liking right now, and now you've got Kansas State having to come back and reestablish the tempo they want. Valpo getting it done on D. Take a look at the help side defense that, that will trigger the offense. Double teams in the post on Nicole Oldie. You know, good use of hand. See that? Another one there. They're really aware of the penetration of Wecker, of Oldie, with a face up or back to the basket. That part of the game has really grown for Valpo and really put them in a great situation. 29-28 here with five to go. How about a 16-5 run over the last five minutes for the Crusaders? Nicole Oldie will take her second free throw. Missed them both. Offensive board, though, for K-State. And Mahoney got on the glass, and that's, that's something that K-State, I think, is very, very needed. They're going to need that second shot, but there's a turnover. Interesting play right there.
out here. I think it's important that, that Gisalpo kind of, you know, realize where they are, control the tempo still, run their execution. You know, they're, they're in a great foul situation. They can be a little bit aggressive with the ball in the late shot clock situation. Trailing by as many as 13 points in the first half. Keith Freeman, you know, he tosses around the names of Dick Bennett. Now on the men's side, Harry Peretta on the women's side. We're seeing very similar philosophies out here with this Valpo team. Oh, well said. Well said. You know, you offensively, you see it in the spread floor and the open post, and that's a Villanova type of look. And then defensively, the on the line, up the line, ball pressure, great swarming defense with Dick Bennett in, in so many close off the way. Stangler called for the walk. Valpo turns it back over. Heady days on the Valpo campus this year. Their men's and women's basketball teams both got into the tournament. Their volleyball team, a winner in the Midcon this year. Their football team won the conference championship. Three-pointer is good from Mahoney. Yeah, Mahoney really getting herself in the game. She got active on the offensive glass, came right back, now getting herself active, active offensively. She's a key to jump-starting the Wildcat offensive attack. He's got five. And five points away from the 1,000 in her career. Watch this. Watch the screeners and the movement of the screeners. That's a lot of times how they attack either the, the post cut or the, the square. No good on the three. Wecker comes out with it. And Kendra fouled in transition. Look right there. You know, that, that graphic showed three Valparaiso players back. That's the respect they have for, for the K-State offensive transition. They're really working hard to get people back. Meredith Bonker commits the foul her first. That will put K-State into the bonus. Kendra Wecker, 89% from the line this year. Now this is a player that the Rock has got to get involved with. Kendra Wecker in the half court has got to be a factor. You know, she, her physical play, her ability to face up and create play is really needed. You know, right now, you know, Kansas State can play to her just as well as Nicole Oldie is going to go down the court. In Minneapolis, 3.31 to go in the first half. K-State 33, Valpo 28. All Championship is brought to you by the new Chevrolets. 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution.